This is the 8.30 Club, and this is where we uh, take the third wall and punch a hole in it and let us interact and do things. We are streaming live out onto uh, Facebook land. If any of you are on other devices, go to our 8.30 Club page and share the stream. That'll let people um, join us vicariously and we'll post in the chat that we'll invite them in for our after party and to take over. One of the great things about using Zoom this way is that we get to make the audience part of the show. And for you performers, how long has it been since you've actually heard applause or hoots or hollers or any of that? Well, we have to like, we like to ask anybody that is in a quiet space to be able to go ahead and unmute yourself and you can give us a clap and everything. Just know if you open a bag of chips, we're going to hear that. If you flush the toilet, we are going to hear that. So you want to be aware of your surroundings and we have ushers who will be pretty quick on the, um, on the mute button to try to keep it out, but we'd love to um, invite you to be active as part of the audience. And I think most of y'all in here have um, experienced the breakout rooms, chatted in the shade canopy, maybe checked out um, the Long Gone Calm tribute or the Anfini tribute. Um, after the show, the after party will be taking place over there. Plenty of time to hang out, catch up, break out, do all that stuff. This is all about us reconnecting again. So, unless I have forgotten anything, I think I'm going to turn proceedings over to you, Ken. And why don't you take us away? My pleasure. Good to see everybody. And I'll be perusing around and making sure I see everybody who's here participating and Chris also Kim. you folks who are just out there on on the Facebook page uh, welcome to Camp Calm uh, 2021 spring fling this is the way we're doing it and uh, we're doing it upright it's just so good to see all these faces um, I'm gonna start off with a song here and then we're just gonna keep things going uh, this is a song that almost all of you have not heard before um, and uh, it is a very unsocial distancing song. <laughs> Gotta get a little messy to get the most out of life. With a big love, cooking up a barbecue. Gotta lick your lips, liquors too. Get the most out of life, get it all over you. Gotta go outside and break a sweat. Walk barefoot, get your feet wet. Smell the rain and the bacon and the coffee brewing. Gotta stub your toes, skin your knees, lose your way, lose your keys. Taste your tears and the tears of your loved ones too. Get a little messy to get the most out of life. Whether making love or cooking up a barbecue, gotta lick your lips. You can lick mine too. To get the most out of life, get it all over you. Gotta fall in love more than once. Gotta bust your ass more than twice. Gotta find a good friend, two or three or four. Gotta hook a fine bass, five or six pounds or more. Then you give it a kiss, throw it back in the water. Take a picture if you can, and let the world know you caught her. Sit on the bank, sip a beer. Thank you, lucky stars, you're still here. But don't forget to brush off your muddy butt before you get back into your chart. Yeah, baby, that's messy. I'm sorry, I'll clean it up. You gotta go fishing one more time. Gotta 
Gotta fall in love more than once. Gotta bust your ass more than twice. Gotta lose a good friend or two or three or four. Gotta miss that big old bass. Eight or nine pounds more. Gotta get a little messy to get the most out of life. Whether making love or cooking up a barbecue, oh, lick your fingers, yeah, lick hers too. Get the most out of life, get it all over you. Whoa, get the most out of life, gotta get it all over you. Get the most out of life, you gotta get it all over you. Boom, 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 woohoo! Thank you very much. Woo! I have to admit, that song took me forever to remember. Good. <laughs> so next up, I appreciate all that. Next up, we're going to have Daniel Bowling. Bring it on, Dan. You betcha. Glad to be here. Uh, this song's from the perspective of a very young child, so I'll, I'll show you Daniel Bowling at the age of, of the uh, protagonist here. <laughs> what a cute kid that's great Daniel <laughs> that is so adorable <clears throat> I like the high waist on the pants <laughs> mom says Joey's pure mixed breed the person he loves best is me we take long walks I'm almost three mama holds the leash Me and Joey, we don't care. We take Mama everywhere. I know Mama's always there. Mama holds the leash. Mama never lets it show. Joey goes right where I go. Joey probably doesn't know. Mama holds the leash Having fun with my friend Joey Running fast, walking slowly We don't worry where we're going Mama holds the leash We take walks with Grandpa Jim But Grandpa got real sick again His dog Molly walks with him Mama holds the leash And Molly's sure to stay real close To Grandpa's leg, she loves him most I don't think that Grandpa knows Mama holds the leash He just knows that Molly cares I hope people everywhere Love a dog and someone's there To help them hold the leash Send that out to Steve Brooks today Oh man! You're going to make me cry there, brother. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's luscious. That's great. Thank you, Daniel. Betcha. And there he is. Steve, Steve Brooks <laughs> would say that that was the least you could do. <laughs> the least. Very good. <laughs> if Steve Brooks would say if he wasn't muted. So, so next up, <laughs> so next up, we're going to have Carolyn. And uh, then, Tim, why don't you, uh, after that, start us and represent our poets after, after Carolyn. All right, I can do that. 
Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. Everybody, this is my friend Chuck Ehrman. Hey, Chuck. Hello, Chuck. I met Chuck right after I moved back up to New Jersey almost 11 years ago. And uh, we've been playing music together ever since. So Hi, we're going to... We're going to do some of his original songs and we're going to do some other stuff. So here we go. Go 
about the day of her was. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Chris, are you, are you, are you, have you hung out at Kerrville at all yet? <laughs> Not Chuck, but I have many years. Oh, I, I know you have one these days. Okay, well, one of these days we're looking forward to it. But uh, I keep we'll, trying. We'll to, I keep trying to get them to enter the songwriter contest, but. Oh, that'd yeah, be yeah. a great idea. I know. Every single year. <laughs> we, would, we would just love to see you, okay? We would well, just love to see you. Thanks. Right? And it love would to be hear wonderful you. Love to, to get there, for sure. You bet. Um, so we're going to have Tim come next. But before that, I've got these things. It's called Tall Tales. It's a lightning round. All right? And I'm going to throw... Okay. Two of them out at you here real quick while Tim's getting ready. All right. These right are questions. Now. And okay. uh, you folks unmute. Okay. And get ready to see who's going to answer first. Okay. Number one. And this is from Camp Calm, Conroe, Conroe area. I don't get to answer, right? No, ma'am, you do not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Especially the okay. first two. Okay. okay. <laughs> this would be painful for her. <laughs> All right. So. Question. Hello. Who? Everybody listen? Who yeah. is the lady that wears high heels in the woods? <laughs> Lindell. Lindell. Of course. Lindell. <laughs> Only one person that wears high heels camping. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, you know, I tried it once and, and I just couldn't, my, I just couldn't, <laughs> so it's all yours, huh? Okay. <laughs> Second one. All right. And once again, you can't answer, Lindell. Okay. <laughs> what is the name of the creek that crosses the land? Turtle Creek. Nope. Sudden Creek. Uh, nope. Sudden Creek. Nope. <laughs> At the Conroe Calm. Not uh, uh, oh, that sometimes creek, uh, turtle creek, uh, still not. Creek's in Carmel. <laughs> this is Conroe. This is, a, this is a Camp Calm, Conroe. Yeah, come on, Blair Creek. <laughs> uh, Lindell, you're gonna have to answer this one. Tom Waters, Little Egypt Creek. Uh, oh, there, it's right there. It comes from Little Egypt. It's just uh, right down the road. Right. Ah, y'all didn't know that? <laughs> ah. he wrote the question. <laughs> he could, we would have given credit for Camp Calm Creek. I didn't even know the creek had a name. <laughs> well, well, now you do. So <laughs> I have seen it. I remember now you and and your sweetie told me the name way back when, but I had forgotten. <laughs> Don't want make me cry. I thought it was going to be. That's right. Crying's good. So, I, thought, I, mean, I just always just assumed it was called Careful Don't Fall in the Creek. <laughs> <laughs> or, or as my, my cutter used to say, my sister put me in. She was drunk. Creek. I thought the name of, I thought the name of it was Who Put a Creek Here? <laughs> and, and why? This is what I thought. I thought it would be one of those puns, like on all those signs, that it would be a fun, fun name of some sort. Enchanted Forest Creek, whatever. <laughs> Whoa, a uh, creek. Little Egypt, that kind of brings uh, everybody closer together. How about uh, Short uh, People Creek? Who knows? Right no. the yeah, know. <laughs> <laughs> they lived in it, that's for sure. The kids were always there. Oh, yeah. L little, Egypt oh, yeah. little Egypt predates me. Uh, could you tell me about Little Egypt? Well, I, actually, I can't, but I can tell you this, that one time the kids were smoking on the other side of the creek and they started a fire and you should have seen the bucket brigade. People found buckets <laughs> in Kerrville cups, in buckets, <laughs> and they put out the, the fire. So that's a good story. Can, can we change the name to Up The? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want. Holy <laughs> Steve. Now that's a pun. Third question. <laughs> All right. That's cool. And there's going to be more going on. And, and I appreciate it. God, this is fun. Um, Tim, are you ready to roll, buddy? Yes, I am ready to roll. I uh, have this little uh, 
background there for uh, actually I prepared this for uh, something I did with Chandler. However, that uh, didn't work out. So now I get to do it again uh, for his poem. Starting things the way things should be started. That is with dessert. So it is chocolate. Oh. It is the heart of chocolate. Cheesecake, mousse, cookie, and pie. Homemade hot fudge, thick and creamy, dribbling over the melting hagen dust perched of a chocolate croissant. Mm. Oh, chocolate thing. Take us into the heart of chocolate, where the calories are natural and don't amount too much if you count by threes. <laughs> Swiss, Belgium, Godiva, Dove, chipped from 50 pound blocks into chunks, wrapped in cookie dough, baked and served warm. Only one bite takes us into the heart of chocolate. Yes. Yummy. <laughs> I broke my screen trying to reach in and grab some. I was drooling. He started handing out chocolate at some of his gigs because people were just in so much pain. <laughs> Ellen jumped up and headed for the pantry. <laughs> that was awesome, Tim. Thank you. So, Bob Beaver, you ready to roll, brother? No, oh, he's there. Bob. And, we'll have Bob, and we'll have Bob, and then there are, we, you know, we're going to intersperse with some videos here. So, so after Bob, uh, just just to let you know, uh, we'll, we'll be having, I believe, Swafo's video. Wow. All right. Cool. Hey, Bob. Well, if you Hi, can't Bob. hear, we won't be able to do much. We're hearing you fine there, Bob. Gotcha, Bob. You can hear me well? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh. Better, better than we hoped, actually. <laughs> Old man, I got good news. I've got bad. Just might be some of your better days been had. Kids are grown and gone. The mortgage is now paid. Old man, many ways you got it made. Coming of age in this age, it's got advantage. Orthoscopic surgery, no bandages. <laughs> Pharmaceutical pills, really all your ills. Living long enough to break social security. <laughs> got old man blue. Parking your car in the same part of the parking lot. <laughs> Trying to remember all those things that you forgot. <laughs> Well, it 
could have been. I get the feeling some folks have heard that song before. Yep. Oh, we lived it. <laughs> Just to let y'all know, if you're not familiar with Zoom, uh, if you try to sing along, you're going to be singing about, oh, four or five beats behind the singer. So just to let you know, and, and, sure. and if you want to sing along, feel free to sing along. Just mute yourself and do it. Okay. Or either that or be psychic and anticipate. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's me, then maybe, you know, I'm maybe two or three beats behind myself. <laughs> We we know that, so we're <laughs> so so you'd only be singing about one beat behind him. <laughs> it's good to see you, Bob. Good to see your right hand working on Thank that too. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Did that did that work okay on the iPad? Yes, sir. Yes. We're fine. I might even do another one later. All right. That sounds good. All right. Cool. Bob. Bob, it does, except when you turn your head away, then it gets a lot softer. So you sort of have to look at it all the time, because otherwise you fade out a bit. And it's good to see that you figured out how to quit hanging from the ceiling. There's Paul. That <laughs> <laughs> was upside down when I first hooked up here, so. <laughs> we get there in the end. Well, that's great. Uh, uh, do we have uh, Swafo's um, video? Can that run in the process here? Absolutely. All right. She's go. on it. Thank you. You're doing a good job. One, two, three, four. Find my tattoo, she said, with a little smile. I ain't given any clue, even if it takes a while, it's okay, come on and play. I really wouldn't mind, if it takes all day, find my tattoo. Find my tattoo, she said, the second time we met. She said, this is not a test to see if you'd forget, but it may have changed to somewhere strange. Go ahead and explore, just take your time. Then take some more. Find my tattoo. Don't arrest me for the crime of playing games. She said, I suppose handcuffs are okay. Just don't go insane. If you're not mean and scary, I guess spanking might be discretionary. Just don't you call the constabulary if a tattoo's temporary find my tattoo find my tattoo she said wearing nothing but a smile she said okay I'll give you little clues if you'll search for style that's okay that's how I play Sir, if you don't mind, make it take all day. Find my tattoo.
<laughs> what a, oh, that's, that's precious. That's my favorite. The only one in lowercase. <laughs> so, oh. just, just moving things along, and I'm going to hit you with a couple of lightning rounds. Okay. But after that, um, Steve Brooks, would you 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 would be on deck? And then Chandler, you're on deck after Steve. How about that? That worked for everybody. Okay. So open for Chandler. Uh, no. 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 <laughs> so y'all ready for a lightning round question? Sure. All right. Am I still not allowed to answer? Uh, Kim wrote them. <laughs> oh, well, you know, as the mother of Capcom, that might be a bit difficult if I answer them. So I'll be quiet. Lindell, yes, you can dear. answer. Let's see. You can jump in on just just give give folks about five seconds. And then okay. if okay. nobody jumps on it, you can answer. You can answer this. Hi, one. everybody. OK, okay Mom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK, so <laughs> question when and with whom? Did the wetting take place? Cameron. <laughs> you got it. And Connie. Hey, Wayne Dameron. Yep. Hey, Wayne Dameron. Good and work, Tom. Unveiled me. <laughs> Legendary, of course. That was a wetting. <laughs> yeah, it was. A would, would, someone tell the, would someone tell the story, please? Yes, please. Uh, should I tell the story? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I got married in Kerrville, and it was a wedding, and we did have a lot of good people there. But when uh, Connie and Alan Lane got married here, uh, there was this storm. You know, I think it, it just had to, to like be like Kerrville, you know, rain and rain. And it got so bad, they got locked onto this land, and we couldn't get them out. And so... <laughs> I went to my mom's house and this very nice lady who was a bookkeeper or something like that, uh, she had this really big car and she brought it down the road and there was Alan and Blair and everybody and they had hooked themselves on a rope so in case they were washed away, they'd all be together, kind of like the kids in the tree at Kerrville, remember that year, the year I was married. And so what happened was we got them out. They all went to Margie's house. That's my mother. And boy, was it a full crew in that house. <coughs> so that, that's how the wetting happened. <laughs> and some of us were lucky enough to get out before it really got too bad. Yeah, like Beverly got out. And I did, too. People, yeah. yeah, we got out. Me and Charlie got out before it got yeah, real bad. It, it really was horrible. The the. The, the most wonderful thing about that, or horrible, whatever, was there was a picture of a house on fire that was floating down the San Jacinto River. A house on fire in the river? Think about that. What? Wow. You think it was Cleveland? Yeah, I think exactly. it was <laughs> Thank you so much for all coming today. I really do appreciate it. I love you, and we will be doing Camp Com in October. Cross your fingers. <laughs> well, Kerrville's from the 1st to 11th, so it's got to be after that. <laughs> it will be after that, for sure. Maybe I have to come to Texas for a whole month. Oh, yeah. that would be great, mm -hmm. Carol. I'm here to be <laughs> well, there, there's plenty, places to there's stay. Plenty room, so there's plenty of other things going on, too. So. i got to have, have <laughs> find places to stay, so if you got room for me, let me know. I have room for you. I know you do, Lundell. And just to let you know, these these tall tales from the lightning round, these are the ones that um, that we can tell. <laughs> okay. Exactly. This is just this is just the the tip of the iceberg. Exactly. Oh, two million of them. That's right, and there will be ample time in the after party in the private rooms to <laughs> dig the dirt. <laughs> Yeah, but we're all get, adults brother? here. We could tell those stories here, too. <laughs> well, you're live streaming on Facebook. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the I public. Don't do oh, I forgot okay. that. <laughs>
right. It's not just us chickens. <laughs> hey, Steve Brooks, how are you doing? Good. Who was saying that? Lindell. Hey, Lindell. Hi, darling. So good to see you. So good to see everyone good to, here. Good to see you. Um, are you doing another lightning, or am I up here? Go for it, buddy. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm I want to keep. I want to. I want to keep y'all guessing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this is a song I like to do when uh, there are other songwriters around. Um, I like to say that uh, I wrote the song with Merle Haggard, and there is just a tiny shred of truth to that. Uh, <laughs> in that, uh, you know. Yeah, about 10 years ago, uh, I, I read an interview with uh, the Hag, and he spouted off this wonderful line about what music does for him when he's all alone. And um, I wrote it down, and it sat in my notebook until after he had passed away, and I Googled it to uh, make sure that he had not written the song himself, and, and then I went ahead with it. Is Chandler ready to roll? I know he's got a an intro, and then um, then he's got he's got a video too, correct? 
Well, let's see. Is Chandler there? Oh, there we go. We're seeing his happy face. So we must be ready. Hey, everybody. Steve, that was awesome. I loved hearing you. I mean, you, you actually predate Kerrville for me. And there are not many people on this planet that that predate Kerrville for me. Uh, you've been such a part of my life. And, you know, if anything, this, this past year has made me realize how important it is to say to people that how much they mean to you. And you have, you, you have been there for me over the years. And I, I really appreciate it. And um, I, I, I got very lucky to be able to tell Ann Feeney about how much she meant to me in one of one of her last conversations on the phone and uh she passed away uh in early february and we are going to be having a uh one of these things very much like this uh for her and if you were, were to go to anfeeney.com which is her regular website slash memorial you will find out about it and um and the event is going to be very good and very much inspired by what Tim and Shannon are doing here. Um, it's what Tim and Shannon are doing here is just tremendous for us in the, in the lockdown. And uh, if, 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 if you go there, you, you, you will see it. Um, many of you know that I, I have made a, a living for the past 30, 40 years, either as a either on or around the stage. And a lot of that has been as a stage hand. And um, the stage hands are also out of work. Um, soon, I, I, am, I am a member of a not one, but two vaccine households. Can I get an amen? Yay! Amen. Me too. Amen. Me Both too. Kimberly and I, Kimberly's just out it. she's very camera shy and she doesn't want to come into the, in, into the picture. The, the reason I am in New Jersey is because of Kimberly. Uh, she is Anne's niece and um, I, I was sending Anne on her farewell to, uh, to Sweden and uh, we had to stay overnight in New Jersey because she lives just down the street from New York airport. And um, I fell into the arms of Kimberly and she is the love of my life. And of all the things that Ann Feeney gave to me, uh, I, I, Kimberly is the greatest. Uh, it, it introduced me to, gave is a bad word. Um, and I, I, I love me some Kimberly. There, there she is. Yay, Kimberly. <laughs> um, yeah, yes, indeed. Once, once the lockdown starts, I don't know about you guys, but I am thinking fall. Um, I have not, I, I normally would have uh, applied for festivals this summer season. I've not done any of that. I'm looking at the fall to get back started. Um, and I'm looking at Kerrville Folk Festival and being at Camp Calm as being the kickoff of the new normal. And I, I can't wait to be there in the fall. Um, we hope so. We love I, you. I, I, I think about all the performers, but I also think about everybody else that's involved in the entertainment industry and particularly the stagehands. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that I don't have a live, uh, straight up live thing for you prepared, but I know that Shannon um, set this up and please go, Shannon, with my tribute to the stage hands. Here you go, a Pennsylvania beer being drunk in, in New Jersey, and I can't wait to be drunk in Texas. <laughs> that sounds like a song. One, two, three. So this lawyer dies and gets up to heaven. St. Peter says, welcome to heaven, come on in. Politician gets up to the pearly gates and St. Peter says, welcome to heaven, come on in. Stagehand gets up there and St. Peter says, the loading dock's around back. I'm just a cup, please fill me up. It won't take much, strong as your stuff. Better than coffee, sweet ginger ale. And all of the colors in comparison pale Oh yeah Could you feel 
The stage hand never gets celebrated. He's too busy setting the stage for the celebration. But the truth is, there can be no celebration without him. There's nothing like doing the load in for your own party. So I say it's time for a toast to the stage hands. The noble profession. The world's third oldest profession. I mean, we all know that the oldest is the prostitute, and the second must be the pimp. But somebody had to set the stage for the ultimate live entertainment. I'll be a pony, you'll be my rider. Don't pull my reins, just hold me tighter. I'm not a coward, a king of Sierra. And I got no buddy, work in my land, oh yeah. Could you hold me tighter? So here's to you, the stagehand, all of you. The wrench slingers, the trust climbers, the box pushers, the dock jockeys, color girls and best boys, the cookie cutters and merch mongers, the rag pullers, set dressers, grid monkeys and pit penguins, the shills and the plants, the quick changers, props table arrangers and marquee letter hangers. The backline humpers, the leggers of decks, guitar and drum techs, the tour managers, projection booth anglers and dog and pony wranglers, the shop stewards and dressing room screwers. I keep my thoughts down in a hole. They'll come up to see me and tell me hello. They tell me they miss me when I'm not around. Look at the answers that never are found. Oh, You know why the sound man only counts to two? Check, one, two. Cause on three, you have to lift. What do you call a stage electrician with a hammer? A thief. So here's to you and all your quirky rivalries. May the war between the tweaks and the squints forever rage. You know, I sometimes think that rivalry was created by management, knowing that the two would race each other to get their rig up first as we all push towards that moment, the one in which we all do this for, that second when the house lights go to half and a hushed silence befalls the crowd and then they go out. That is the most important moment in the universe. For from that darkness, anything can happen, and it usually does. And if we have done our jobs, we will sit beneath the blue lights, headsets engaged, to listen for the opening of the door of wonder. out of both sides of his mouth. You know how many stage electricians it takes to screw in a light bulb? It's not a light bulb, it's a lamp. You know the difference between a stage hand and a pig? You won't find a pig roaming around a hotel lobby at 3 a.m. looking for a stage hand. Without the lights, the show would be radio. So tune in, my friends. Stay tuned and tune that damn thing. From producer to usher, diva to downrigger, not a single task more important than the other. Here's to you, behind the lights, behind the set, behind the crowd, behind the mask, behind the scene, you are the scene. The bees are buzzing, the flowers are blue, I'm a 
I'm not so high, but I'm gonna love you soon. Give all my greed to a rich man in need. Throw out my guns and spit on my teeth, and I'll be. Here's the LD, the SD, the CD, the TD, SM, MC, ME, PA, A1, L2. Here's to you, show people, cause there's no people like show people, like no people I know. Here's to you that put the U in the S, the US in show business by putting the U in US. you mentioned that you have every uh, first Friday of the month an 830 club monthly news show and particularly this one coming up on the second I think everybody just gave a, um, a you just gave a little preview of the kind of work that uh, we're going to be featuring so thank, gotta, th thank you for mentioning that I I, I it sounds like I'm jerking off, but I, I, I and I probably am, but a, a little known fact about Chandler is that, that I am also uh, an award-winning filmmaker, and um, I've, I've won four significant awards in filmmaking, um, and I'm going to be showing those on uh, April the 2nd, the first Friday of April, and uh, it, since, since July, I, I have been doing a monthly full set. And uh, because of the Ann Memorial, I just really didn't have the time to, to, to put together live guests and instead decided to show a bunch of the films that I have, that I have made. And uh, we're gonna be doing that um, on, on, on the first Friday of April. And uh, please come to, to Tim's website to, to register for that. And I'm very excited to show some of those some of them are, are so some of the videos that i'll be showing are so old that i actually have hair in the, in the videos <laughs> so so uh yeah but i i in i i shaved my head when i turned 30 which would have been 94 um and so i guess that video was made in 92 93 um and i and i, and I won the vancouver uh, uh, film festival vancouver film festival uh, People's Choice Award, one where the people that go to the film festival vote on what they like the most. And I won that. I, and I won it in 94, 90, 94 and 95 when I didn't have hair. Um, so I, I'll, I'll be showing some of those. And uh, God, I love seeing all of you. And I, and I hate that I can't see gallery view right now. <laughs> oh, there we go. Hi. Hi, everybody. I see you now. Um, some of us didn't I, remember I, I'm you on here. Thank you, thank you for indulging me in my my stage hands video. And uh, take take it away, Ken. This is this is not an indulgence. This is that we're we're enjoying it. Okay, so I look forward to you and uh, indulging us more often, buddy. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And thank you, thank you. And I do yeah, remember I, you with I do remember you with hair. I, I do. I, 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 remember I remember. I remember you with not white hair. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> I remember you when you were trying to play guitar too. <laughs> I love you, Chris. Yeah. Don't 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 tell anybody about me playing the guitar. <laughs> oh, well, if you ever have any money, I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> that will never happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving things along here, uh, we do have some other folks who have shown up. Um, but, um, uh, Paul Colbert, uh, or Colbert, I, I, I'm, I'm watching Colbert way too often. I just wanted to put, let you know you're on deck and, uh, after which, uh, Jack McKenzie, are you playing tonight? You're yeah, shaking no, his head. Yeah, no, thanks, Cam, but not tonight. Thank you. Okay, brother. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I will come up with someone else, but uh, Paul, 
you're next. But before we do that, here's the lightning round again. So I give give Paul a little chance to get in tune. Um, and and no, uh, Lindell, you can't answer this one either. In fact, I'm going to give you all two that she can't answer. Question. Mm -hmm. The oldest bridge, not the newest bridge, the oldest bridge to the other side of the creek was built by what gender? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. I just feel like it wouldn't be a question if the answer wasn't women. You're, you're, you're absolutely correct. How many? Well, I mean, I think we've all been discussing how many genders there are for some time now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a great answer. Oh, it was perfect. Okay. How many who identified themselves, at least back then, as women? Lindell? You're muted, Lindell. Now you're okay. That's because I hate me. <laughs> I guess one. Spider, spider, right. Spider. Although it's hard to say because it's pre spider. People had a hidden agenda. I think it was spider, John Spider, or it's pre spider. I'm, I'm thinking Willow. Well, my little, Willow. little list here says there are five of them who built it. So there. One more. Say again, hon. Hang on, let me get you. There you go. <laughs> okay, now you can. Every you were asking you who you built the bridge? bridge? Yes. It was like the Vahalo group. The Vahalo group. Okay. Who were they? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. These days, that that's a... That's a more and more uh, viable answer. Is I, Hi, I Paul. don't remember. <laughs> Independent recollection. <laughs> Kim, Kim Fusler, do you know? I don't you're, think you're she does. Darling. No. You did, Kim. I think did that it, was before Kim's time, maybe. I'm not yeah. sure. Did it involve Steve and Tiffany? Say again. Go ahead, mute. Did, did, did it involve Steve and Tiffany? I don't think so. And there, and there are no, no pictures of, of the event. Ah. Oh, no, I don't think so. But, uh, but here's, the John, here's the John Hogan for building the newest one. John, no, John Hogan. It was John Hogan kids died, maybe. I'm not sure. Did it John Hogan no. building the, the new bridge. There no, Randy, Randy Alexander Hail built the on the, built the last bridge, and somebody else needs to come rescue that one because it's in bed. All right, so I've got I've got one more, and then we're going to hear hear from Paul. Um, and there are two of you who can't answer this question, and you know who you are. Him and Lindell. Lindell and Lindell and and someone else. Kim. Who wrote, no, well, yeah, and Kim, that's true. She, who wrote the camp song, Enchanted Forest? Bill Ward. Bill Ward. And? Blair. Oh, I know that. Susan Martin. Yeah, or exactly Susan it. Robbins, whichever name she's using. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using Susan Martin Robbins. Yeah. Hi, Susan. Hi, I haven't seen you on the gallery view. Hey. Welcome home, Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi, Susan. Good to see you, Susan. Good, Good to see you. you. And Swapos. And Chris, Chris, I knew you when you had hair. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, so I, did took I. Great, I took a great photo of you when you had hair. You 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 took my promo shot in 1990 of me with hair and yes yes that 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 photograph is still around before my time <laughs> yeah, <again. laughs> 
So Susan, just are you because singing tonight? Chris, just because Chris, it was warm. I knew you when you had hair. <laughs> Woo check it out. Oh yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> Susan Martin took that photograph, 1990. It was hanging on the wall, so it was just out of my reach. There you go. <laughs> I love you, it's Susan. And are you going to be singing tonight, Susan? I don't think so. My voice is kind of iffy. Okay. If you change your mind, you let me know. By the way, there are people, as we, as we go through the list, and I'm, I'm talking to things, if, the, if you are new and would like to sing, just go ahead and, and put it in the chat uh, so I can I can add you to the list. I have a, a pretty good list here, um, but uh, I just Wait, want to make sure everybody gets covered. What is right? Say what, buddy? We're only singing if our voice is right. Nobody told me. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be on, on purpose. I'm outside today, and I'm actually a little bit on the raspy side, so we'll see. see I've lost about three notes above and below my range, so. Sing us a raspy one. All right, well, I'm going to do a song just because uh, I wrote this a couple years ago, uh, literally the week before Kerrville and debuted it at Kerrville. And as, as our, almost everything I write, it's a short shelf life song. And thank God the shelf life for this one has expired. But the, the nature of short shelf life songs, of course, is that this is the fifth version of it because the facts kept changing. Of course, that was, that, that's because I think facts matter, but that's another story. Um, this is a sing-along song. And so in order for you to sing along, everyone's got to mute themselves except me. <laughs> because otherwise we'll get that delay effect and it's sort of, it'll throw me off. Anyway, your part is called the chorus and you know it, you've heard it before. Uh, the only thing you have to remember is at the beginning of each chorus, the first two times you, 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 you start with I, and then when we get to the third chorus, you use he at the beginning. You got that? I, I, he, all right? I am just a rich man, though my wealth is oversold. I have squandered our good country through a litany of deceit. Such are my promises. All lies, I guess. Still, my fans hear what they want to hear and disregard the rest. When I left my home and my family, my father gave me dough to get me started. It was just a little grub steak, 60 million or so. Oh, that's... Buying low, buying up the poor quarters where the ragged people go, tearing them down so I could make my towers grow. I lie, la lie. I lie, la lie, 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 la lie. I lie, la lie. I lie, la lie, 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 la lie, la 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 la. Y'all sounded great. Stiffing all my workmen's wages, all their earnings I did rob, married Melania, while I slept with all the whores on 7th Avenue. They all declare there were times that I was so loathsome, they took no comfort there, la la la. Now the House voted impeachment, saying my powers I did abuse, but in the Senate, Mitch had stacked the deck there so much that I could not lose. It made no sense if they had the votes to do it, then they would be stuck with pants, lie, la lie. I lie, la lie, I lie, la lie, 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 la lie, I lie, la lie. Now I've lost my re-election Cause you wished that I was gone Going home To the New York City winters and obscurity Bankruptcy all alone 
down in Florida tweets a tweeter and a liar with no shame and he tweets out all his insults to everyone that cut him down or dissed him so he tweets out in his anger and his rage you are stealers you're all losers but the vote counts still the same lie la lie he lie la lies he lie la lie 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 la lies he lie la lies he lie la 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 Thank God. Excellent, excellent. Well done. Well done. Oh, it. <laughs> it, it was you one of those songs that, chorus. that literally <laughs> wrote itself. I didn't have to change too many words. <laughs> <laughs> I particularly like being able to use the, the line about the whores on 7th Avenue. So. <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. Thank you. Except oh, they're on 9th uh, Avenue, but never mind. <laughs> Anyway, uh, um, who they were here? I'm Spider's Dog Porter. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Big <laughs> Snaker Ray. Uh huh. Tony Little Son as Ed Glover. Oh, okay. You're talking some Minnesota boys there. Yeah. I can't remember which one was. Isn't it? So, Jack, you want to go next? Uh, I got right. All I hate about line and track. These old bars about to bust my back. One of their songs. And you're muted, Jack, but I'll unmute you. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to play anything tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, buddy. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So it's um, awesome. Absolutely awesome seeing everybody though. Thank you. So, so Ken, Ken, in case you don't know, uh iPad number two <laughs> is actually Jake Strongbow and Diane. And he's he actually signed up. He came up on the, the laid up and comers list last night, but I, I did write him down if you want to fit him in. Who is this now again, say? iPad number two, Jake iPad, Strongbow. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> then, then let's go for it, man. Yeah. Okay. There. And after that, um, how about let's do um, uh, Patrick Dodd's uh, uh, video. Absolutely. Great. Take it away. All right. <clears throat> I want to tell a story about the power of of music. All of you know the power of music, but I want to to show you the power of a particular song that can change a life. It was Wednesday, the 15th of July, 1992. I walked into Wentry Brothers in Old Town Spring, Texas. I was resplendent. My stetson hat, my panhandle slim shirt, my silver and turquoise. And I walked down the stairs into the bar room I ordered up a burger and a beer. There was a Cajun on the stage with a derby hat. He was not engaging the, the, the crowd, what little crowd there was. When this dark haired beauty walked down the stage, walked across the windows on the far side of the room, crosses in front of the stage, and comes, comes past me. And I tip my hat, and I howl to her, and she just goes on by back up the stairs. For some reason, I have no idea why she went and did that. Diane. <laughs> yep, that was it. But anywho, Dark head beauty. <laughs> oh boy comes down off the stage, taking a break, and I asked him if I could borrow his guitar, get up there and do a couple, three songs. And I get up there and I do a couple, three songs, and I wild the crowd. And, uh, Bunch of brothers closed early, like 10 o'clock, and a couple of the waitresses said, uh, you know, there's a, an open mic, you know, about a mile south here, Westfield, by the tracks, 
come along, and so off down the road we went. I signed up, and I, as I was waiting to get on stage, this dark-haired beauty shows up and sticks two beaded guitar straps in my my face. And I was wearing, you know, a signature vest that I had made. Uh, it had 10 different lace stitches on it. And I pointed at the uh, uh, guitar straps, and I pointed at the vest. I said, if you put that on this, we can make money. So off down the road we went. We went to have coffee. I think she had pancakes. Uh, and we took up housekeeping. I made fun. him wait a week, but yeah. <laughs> that was 28 years, eight months, and five days ago. So anywho, um, come October, she says, uh, I've been invited to a music festival out in the woods, west of Conroe. And I don't really want to go there alone. So she's, you know, you want to go? Up? Yeah, sure. So we go to our first fall fling. Down the two track in the dark. Oh, yeah. It seemed like it was like four miles down the two track. <laughs> we get down there and, and uh, we go up to main camp, uh, which was still the trailer at that point. That was before the trailer burned down. And uh, Bird pulls me aside. Apparently, he'd been talking with Diane, and, and uh, uh, she told him that you know I'm, I'm part Native American, and so he asked me, "Are you an angry Indian?" I looked at him. I said, "No, nah, I'm just mildly pissed off." And it started <laughs> off as a chuckle, and it became Blue. a belly laugh, and he cut me loose in Camp Calm. And I met some of the finest people I've ever met in my life. And it is all because of this one song. I know you right. Don't miss me when I Oh, 
shadows of midnight on a northbound train. I wish I was the headlight on a long back train. Oh, Carolina Ray. took it and ran with it and made it more of a spiritual. You can't I keep taking Diane. <laughs> Thank you, and Dale. Love you, you too. You can't just do a cover like a cover. You just you gotta make it your own. Always. Thanks. Good to see you guys. So Ken, I just wanted to give this video a little bit of an intro before I put it up. Sure. Um, it's a piece by Patrick Dodd, who went to both camp comms, uh, Mary Birmingham's his partner, she was going to introduce it, I don't know, they may be tangled up in their Zoom wires, but he's a, they're really good friends of Tim and I's, and we try and visit them every year when there isn't a pandemic going on, but he's just, I think, one of the really good singer-songwriters, um, that I came love up, him. you know, real outlaw, I basically hung out with the likes of Blaze Foley and the rest of that crew and, and argued with Blair and Lindell a lot oh. <laughs> politically. Um, but one of the things that he did as a songwriter is he really kind of took it for social justice issues. You know, he, he really put his talents and put it on the road and basically demonstrated for preserving forests and for incarceration and for Indian rights and, and a lot of things. So, we really wanted him to be a part of this. He's like so many in our group isn't performing anymore, but um, I didn't want him left out of the mix. But this is a short piece that uh, Mary and I put together um, about some of the work they've been doing in the Redwoods. So we can chat about him after, but I just want you all to, to see this video. Um, and maybe you can remember some stuff about him for me too. That would be really nice. I would love to talk to him. <laughs> sacred grove each hillside covered green with trees has the power to heal a weary land we must sanctify that ground don't let them cut the big trees down every forest holds the key to nature's plans each ancient tree is a legacy of life Every tree is a thing that must survive They can clean our dirty air If we'll handle them with care Every tree is a thing that must survive Each sacred grove Each hillside covered green with trees Has the power to heal a weary land We must sanctify that ground Don't let them cut the big trees down Every forest holds the key to nature's plans ancient tree can tell us all we need to know every tree is a thing that must survive they can help us understand how we fit in nature's plans every tree is a thing that must survive each sacred grove 
each hillside covered green with trees Has the power to heal a weary land We must sanctify that ground Don't let them cut the big trees down Every forest holds the key to nature's plans Changing tree is a gift we leave our kids Every tree is a thing that must survive They can sleep beneath their limbs They can learn their ancient hymns Every tree is a thing that must survive Each sacred grove, each hillside covered green with trees Has the power to heal a weary land we must sanctify that ground, don't let them cut the big trees down Every forest holds the key to nature's plans We must sanctify that ground, don't let them cut the big trees down Every forest holds the key to nature's plans I'm really glad you guys had some Patrick Dodd on here. That is just so awesome, I can't even tell you. So, um, uh, and one of the things I, 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 I didn't see Tom. Is Tom here yet? Baggage? Has he made it? I haven't seen him yet. Yes, okay. he's, he's there. He's uh, looking very Oh, he is. There he is. Okay. So, Tom, um, I, I, you're on deck. And, and um, uh, Carrie Chambles, are you singing tonight? I yes, am not I have singing. a song I'd oh. like to sing. You don't want to sing. Okay. Uh, oh. who, who was that, by the way? Carrie. Oh. Carrie, Harden? Is, uh, Carrie Harden? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so it's going to be I say the than I would, but I'm I'd, I'd be self conscious. You're more, yes. much more fluid than me, right? Not now. It'll be Tom and then Carrie. But before you go before you get in there, Tom, I've got a c I got a couple of more questions for the <laughs> lightning round here. Okay. So one more from and I'll probably get back to the, the Camp Con Conroe things here, but and then we'll, but the second one's going to be more of a Kerrville question. Okay. Oh, good, Kerrville. Yay. Okay. So, for those of you who uh, really got into this, um, how did the sacred fire begin? And Lindell, you can't answer that one. Because I don't know. Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but he lit it. <laughs> now, what, what are the beginnings? What is the origin of the sacred fire? John Trudell. No. You're getting close. No. I think it was Floyd Westerman uh, Rowe, maybe, that brought the ash? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. All right. And that was that was started at Kerrville. Yes. Yes. That ash, the original ash from the fire, and took it to calm for the first calm sacred fire, as I recall it. Yes, Blair but, collected the ashes. But, yes. But but Ken, there's a great story here. Go for it. Okay. So I was at the we were at the Sacred Fire at Kerrville, you know. And the thing they brought the Sacred Fire in was like this little thing and they throw it down. I said, Jay, I said, Blair, we have to go get the thing the Sacred Fire was in. He said, being a cop, he said, No, we can't that belong to us. I said, they threw it down the dam, you know, think. He said, we can't. I said, yes, we can. And I, I took it and I scooped up the fire and I said, let me tell you something. This is going to Camp Calm. Now, he was a cop, remember that. He was like, you know, a, a, a person that was, was like a cop, okay? And so I said, we're going to take this to Carvel. And years later, he said to me, that was the best decision, decision you ever made. I'm sorry, I've got stopped. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just, how it just, came to Camp Calm. Just because I have it here and at my fingertips, here is some of those ashes <laughs> right here. <laughs> who's, who's saying that? Chandler. Yes, indeed. Oh, way to go, Chandler. <laughs> I, I, I helped keep that fire alive. Uh, Festival of the Eagles and my relationship with, with Blair, uh, it, it made the creation of what our relationship is now. I love Blair so much. And um, th this, is, this stays in a, um, in, a, in a curio cabinet in, in, in my house here in New Jersey. 
and uh, it's it's forefront and center. Blair was Lundale's husband. He passed away. Yeah, I got some Blair like, too. Like like sixty years ago, but I should tell you, so you should know, that a couple of years ago, someone came into my life, and and the story is kind of kind of interesting because I was talking to him on the phone and I, I said, well, you know, I keep men out of my life. I don't want men in my life. And he said, so how do you do that? And so, well, you know, my husband died 14 years ago. And the truth of the matter is I just keep men out of my life. He said, so how do you do that? I said, I explained to every one of the men that try to come in my life that I am involved with people who do great works with me who saved the world with me, who have a mission with me. And Jason said, so what part of a mission do we not have? And now we're, we're, we're doing all these great things, you know, in, in states to help drug addicts. So I think that's a wonderful story. Don't you guys think that's a great story? Yes. I yes, guess indeed. you didn't want me to, as old as I am, I guess you didn't want me to be alone forever, right? So Blair died 60 years ago. Good for you. And I'm very, and I am very, very happy. So that's Who is this person in your life? Happy for you, Linda. We really are. Yay, Nobody... Lindell. And we're going to try to save a little bit of the world. You know me, if I can't work on a good, do good project, save the world. You know, I can't, I'm not happy. So I'm really thrilled. I always said I never wanted to work with drug addicts, but you know what? Here you are. God said, yeah, there you go. So, and, and by the way, one more thing I would say is that all the stuff I did with abused kids is absolutely a part of drug addicts. They, you know, their abuse and their stuff is so you know, much a part of of how they went there and how they came there, how, how they were there. So, you know, I think my years with abuse kids really helped me get to this place with these other people. Thank you. I love you. I'll be quiet now. They keep muting me. So I'll yeah, it's all right. We love it. This is uh, <laughs> so many of us haven't gotten to hear a lot of this stuff either, Lindell. You know, I mean, I, I'm one of them. I mean, I've been able to just in and out, mostly out of, of the comb gatherings uh, at, uh, up there in Conroe, even though I, I had my camper up there for a year and a half. Yeah, but well, let me let me say something. I spent two years in in Montana. Oh, my God, I'm so glad I'm out of Montana, but we won't discuss that. And the thing was, all our patients, you know, everything, everything was abuse and everything was this and that. And we got like a million dollars, $330,000 worth of research out of there. You know, we didn't get paid for it. We just did it. But the truth of the matter is that I am so, it's, it's so happy. You know, I'm 78 years old and I'm, I'm still in a place where I can help people. And one more thing, the truth of the matter is addicted people have children with it that that have trauma too. So Mimi's 84 and I'm 78, and we're gonna to try to figure out how to help the children of drug addicts. So that's a great thing, I think. I love Beautiful. you guys. Love you. Beautiful. Now I'll be quiet before they mute me again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you got, Tom? Well, Ken, I'm uh, I'm recovering from my second COVID vaccination shot, so I'm a little out of it, which is why I'm <laughs> on late. But uh, I'm Probably totally the best you've ever done this song. Oh yeah, whatever. I'm, I don't have my guitar with me, so I'm just gonna acapella, do the beginning of a song, and just do it for y'all. And I'm not gonna be on long because I'm gonna go back to bed. But um, so what you gonna do when the whole world's spinning? What you gonna do when the whole world's spinning? What you gonna do when just a few keep on winning? You gotta wake up and take a stand. What you gonna do when the whole world's burning? 
What you gonna do when the whole world's burning? When those who like to fight don't give a damn about learning, gotta wake up and take a stand. Well, I believe there can be a better way. Oh, I believe we gotta stand up and say, I believe starting today gonna wake up and take a stand everybody gotta wake up and take a stand what you gonna do when the believers stop believing what you gonna do when the believers stop believing words just lie sold to others so deceiving gotta wake up and take a stand well i believe there can be a better way, you oh, I believe. We gotta stand up and say, well, I believe. Starting today, we're gonna wake up and take a stand. Everybody gotta wake up and take a stand. And what you gonna do when they take away your freedom? What you gonna do when they take away your freedom? Just to disagree ain't any kind of reason. Gotta wake up and take a stand. Well, I believe there can be a better way. Oh, I believe you gotta stand up and say, oh, I believe starting today, gonna wake up and take a stand everybody gotta wake up and take a stand and what you gonna do when they steal your democracy what you gonna do when they steal your democracy with all the lying words and so much hypocrisy gotta wake up and take a stand well i believe there can be a better way oh i believe we got to stand up and say, well, I believe starting today, we got to wake up and take a stand. Well, I believe there can be a better way, oh, I believe. We got to stand up and say, well, I believe starting today, we're going to wake up and take a stand. Everybody got to wake up take a stand everybody gotta wake up and take a stand yeah. thank you Tom thank you. I can't Thanks. stay on guys I gotta go back to bed so all right, you I'm, take, gonna, take care. I'm gonna leave y'all but um, I love you and I wish I could see you and I'm coming down in October for that uh, Care World <laughs> Festival so that's the plan. Tom, I'll pass that along to Lenore. Dude, I'm on the crew. I'm on the crew. Outstanding. Love you guys. Tom, is your legislature suppressing the vote too? They are. We're fighting it though, buddy. We're fighting it. We're winning. We're All winning. Right. All I right. Fight, my friend. Take care. Take care, Tom. Bye-bye. But Carrie Harden, we're going to have you next. But before that... Here's a, couple, here's a couple of questions. And like I said, I promised we were going to switch to Kerrville. So, you all ready for this? I'm ready. All right. So, question. Who started Body Song Night? <laughs> Camp Kerrville, at, at Camp Calm in Kerrville. Who Tim started? Henderson. Early. Tim Henderson. Tim Who Henderson. else? Yeah. Tim, Tim Mason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's well were, beyond me. My guess would be Dan. No, Tim Mason, oh, yes. right? No, no. Henderson. 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 Shannon really? did it. Shannon started it. Uh, Tim, Henderson, oh. Tim Henderson started it. We just continued it, and we had Eric Schwartz as one of the MCs, which is great. We also had Graham Warwick. Who, who's part MC, part bouncer? He was That's perfect. Scary. <laughs> so, so who started it? it was Kim, Kim, Tim, and Henderson. Shannon? Henderson. No. No. It was Tim Shannon Anderson. Local Verde, I think. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Marion might know. 
<laughs> well, we also, we also, um, we had I think heard we stole it, that from Moco did Verde. Yeah, I yeah, I started at Moco Verde. <laughs> yeah, I think we stole it. We, we apologize. Oh no, you did a great <laughs> job with it. Loved it. Especially it's so great to see you, Marion. Great to see you. Uh, I think at, at Moco Verde, uh, I think he came up with the name Green Snot for that group. I don't. I'm not sure. Yeah, Cynthia came up with yeah. Cynthia. Oh, Green Snot. If that wasn't Tim, that was Cynthia. It was Green. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Marco Verdi was Green Snot. That was a good one. Yes. <laughs> so, so we we did know that it started at Marco Verde with Tim Henderson, but we actually revived it after years and years and yeah, years at Camp Cup, awesome. and we got Tim to host it. Ah. Oh, that's but, why I did not know. It. You remember. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did um, Body Song Night uh, eventually evolve into Wild yeah. Women's Night? Yeah, probably so. Uh, <laughs> those are different things. Yeah. So, yeah, oh, no uh, thing. Wild Women Night used to be just women, and the men took it over. Yeah. yeah they did, the men Shannon, that's true. Drag to come to it, and then yeah. it became a drag. <laughs> Real drag. A drag queen queen. Exactly. Thanks. <laughs> Dressing and the women would dress as men, and you know, back and back with and the forth. Bras, with the bras, with the bras. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I and remember. I think that at that part, part, Rod Kennedy was just like, "Oh no, we're not doing this anymore." <laughs> yeah, I know Larry Dillon was in both of those. Oh yeah, yeah. For sure. simultaneously, simultaneously, for sure. For sure. I, I I won the drag contest in my mid twenties. <laughs> oh, when you were just a baby. Yes, it was that was a, that was a long time ago. But uh, if if you think Rod Kennedy's reaction was bad, you should you should you should have seen Vaughn's. Um, <laughs> this must be shut down. <laughs> Sense of humor. Oh gosh. But, uh, as I recall, one of the first Wild Women episodes involved uh, some emergency department coming in, and Rod finding. Uh, Sticky Paul, the head of security in drag, and that kind of oh, that, uh, did it. that did it, that did it, that did it. <laughs> security actually came in on a on a on an ambulance call, and they found the the head of security at the time was uh, Larry Fine, Harry Larry, in in complete drag, and uh, the, the 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 Kerrville constables seeing Larry and drag was a sight to behold. Yes, I seem to remember uh, he, had, he had clothespins on his nipples. Yes. Oh, my God, are you sure? For life. Uh, all right. I, I think maybe we can take this backstage for the after party. <laughs> <laughs> we we so, got a song coming from Carrie. Is that the plan, Ken? Okay, yeah, that's okay. the plan. Get back with the plan. <laughs> okay. It's great to see everybody. It's been a really long time. Um, I've been doing, um, well, since I came to Kerrville the first time, I became um, a neurologic music therapist. And my most recent fun job is I have a music therapy group with adults with eating disorders. So oh, I do no, study I music it. therapy and trauma, Mendel. So I, I yeah, love to yeah. hear you talking about that. All right, so this song um, was a writing prompt after, um, I guess it was after the, uh, oh, anyway, the prompt was in uh, the very interesting times. And so I wrote this about my grandmother. Steve Brooks knows my grandmother, knows she's nothing like this. Um, <laughs> so maybe it's more about me. My name is Mary Louise I was born back behind those trees Down there on Gilly Creek 1924 My grandfathers came from France Huguenots by happenstance It was a sin for us to dance Down on Gilly Creek Meanwhile in the city, women were smoking and cutting their hair. Drinking booze in their dancing shoes while the preacher yelled, you're gonna burn in hell. My name is Mary Louise. 
I do just as I please. Ever since I left Gilly Creek, 1944, my grandfather's the pioneers, the toughest steps since leave a trail of tears. I haven't been back for years and years down on Gilly Creek. Moved off to the city where I learned to curse and swear. Drinking booze in my dancing shoes while my daddy yelled, you're gonna burn in hell. My name is Mary Louise. Oh, living is my expertise as I celebrate 100 years, 2024. My name is Mary Louise. Oh, I've seen some very interesting things. So bury me, please, on Killy Creek. I ain't afraid of hell no more. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Thank you. And how are you doing, Carrie? I'm doing a lot better. Thanks. Uh, no more crutches. I got my second um, virus shot yesterday. And yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go to the mountains now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, Shannon, we, we've got a couple of, 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 at least a couple of videos here. Um, could, yeah, could we, we, hear? we also we also had Clara willing to jump into the fray if we had okay, an opening excellent. for her. I mean, if you need time to get ready, I can run a video, or you can go whenever he tells you you can. <laughs> what do you think, Clara? I uh, I think there should be a a video. I gotta like tune and figure out what the settings are supposed to be. Uh, <laughs> That's cool. But thank you. Okay, how about how about let's hear from Jenna. Kirkpatrick. Okay. Just give me a sec. Take your time. By the way, we're working on somehow trying to get back to um, uh, doing some semblance of the kids camp. Probably not an in-person this summer, but uh, we're having an impromptu meeting of, of, of that group uh, this next well, week. As, as as a veteran that kicked that off, Ken, um, put my name back in the hat, please. Okay, I will, indeed. I, I feel I feel somewhat forgotten in this. Oh. <laughs> Ken, I don't know if you saw my notes you used since you mentioned Enchanted Forest. I'll sing that. Okay, say that again now. I don't know. This... I, I sent a note to you. I'll, since you mentioned Enchanted Forest, put me on the lineup. I'll sing that. Is that okay. you, Susan? Yes. Yes. All right. Well, you're, okay. you're, there you go. So we'll hear from Jenna, then we'll hear from Clara, and then we'll have a uh, um, an, another video. I think we've got a, a, a Tim Henderson a video. Is that too. part of this? Oh, okay, Why Liz. Thank you. Yeah. Great. We're, we're jam-packed and fun-filled. <laughs> Let me put y'all on the list here. Okay, so. So you run, Jenna. I have a body saw. Okay. Ruth. Ruth. All right. You're on the list. So we're ready to go. There was a lady from beside a river. She was told is the great green gray greasy Limpopo River. And she was told by her fourth grade principal, Camille Dedrick. Now she never knew no better till now. That river was great and gray and green and greasy, but limbing and popoing it were not none such. It were fast from crick to crick, and if your toe got in it, it'd suck you in into your death. The river that travels 65 miles per hour, you could lay 35 18 wheelers across it sideways with girly mud flaps on them. Uh -huh. Break a break a one now, Mr. Settlehorn. You got your ears on. See any smokies out there? Come back. Shh. Yes, yeah, Settlehorn, this is Red Devil. You got smokies up at mile marker 113. Look out. Shh. She licked her glasses, rubbed them gently on either side of her worn apron. The grandkids were playing by the river and it worried her. When she was worried, her vegetable Tourette's would come. Beet, carrot, cauliflower, cauliflower, broccoli, broccoli, red, yellow, green bell, peppers, peppers, potatoes, goodness, God almighty, cheese grits. She 
rocked back in her chair, thinking of a cake and the kids drowning. And if a grit were really a vegetable, she was gonna die sooner and or later via Condita. She wanted to hear that song. Remembered camping in Big Bend, the summer of 42. Fire sparks rose into the periwinkle sky, carrying her wishes on their tongues. They would deliver them to Zeus or Athena, and everyone would come to her party, bringing perfectly wrapped presents with notes and sweet bows. Now here up the hill comes four sunburned kids with cardboard boxes shoved up under their arms. Oh, aren't they beautiful fruit, said the lady as she fixed back on her glasses. Fresh pineapple inside, y'all. Y'all come on. Inside, she had plenty of hard candy and glistening crystal dishes, warm cookies and cold whole milk. She didn't realize when she was worrying on that that great green, gray, greasy Limpopo River was truly the M.I. Crooked letter, crooked letter, I. Crooked letter, crooked letter, I. Home back, home back, I. River and that river housed many a child on a self-made ship. Hold on, she called. Ooga, ooga. Warm pie smells. Bits of flour and sugar cold coagulating in the fridge. Today is my birthday. She was barely heard as the words bubbled up back through the most beautiful squash casserole and sweet potatoes risen with grandma's molasses and large hunks of butter. Her grandkids surrounded her, glistening wet with sweat, holding colorful cut up, re-glued glittered construction paper treasures, a crown, a bracelet, a ring, and a tiny boat. Well, it floats, Granny. Oh, my little watermelons. She rocked back in her chair, slapping her hand up on her good knee and said, the Greek gods could sit around all day wondering why they don't get a capital G. But you see, my little pickles, listen to me. Love, it'll come and it'll go. But that river down there, she showed you, Flo. <laughs> I would, I would like to add something here because Jenna's one of Jenna's children uh, gave me one of my most quotable Kerrville quotes, and Vern will appreciate this when she said, "Mommy, everybody out here looks like Santa Claus." <laughs> <laughs> and with that, with with watching Jenna, if you've never experienced Jenna before, um, you can see why the kids there, the teens out there at the teen camp, just absolutely adore her. She wins over and melts everybody. Everybody. You know, kids and adults alike. So. And I, I, I think it's important to note that, um, that both Jenna and Tim really founded the poetry rock that is Camp Calm and uh, every I think it was Tuesday and Sunday we we did the poetry rock and I'm not sure exactly how that's going to happen in October but I I, I want to just sound out that we absolutely have to do the poetry rock um, at it, which Jenna did Jenna found it yeah well in the after party I can tell you the whole backstory on that but Jenna has been absolutely integral in um, just about all the poetic things that um, that we've done. You all know how the poetry rock came about? I do. I do. So, can I tell a little story? Go for it. Please do, Please. Now. Okay, so I have to tell you, if you don't know, I'm the mom of Camp Com, so nobody said that. So, you know, they were, they were digging up stuff all over the place. Uh, I, I guess it was to get the, uh, you know, the sewer system or something in. And there was this huge rock that they, it was a triangle rock. And Blair said, oh, my God, that's such a pretty rock. And I said, so, so what? He said, well, let's bring it to Camp Com. I said, for what? 
he said, well, I don't know quite yet, but we're going to put it in the middle of, uh, of, of the place. And I went, okay. So this huge triangle rock came to be in the center of Camp Calm. And he said, well, I think this will be the poetry rock. You remember that, Tim? You remember that? Well, yes. I, what I remember was that um, Blair looked around and saw the uh, campfire site that Ed Florida and I had created when we backed into the Blue Collar Hippies camp and yes. sort of made everything um, made everything occur. And that Blair had said, "I think we should cap that." Um, we should we should cap that uh, uh, campfire site. So that's the way I had understood it. And, and there's one other thing here. Uh, when Jill and Evie and I came to Kerrville, um, I don't remember where we first camped, but sometime they came to where Camp Com is now. And the, the beautiful part about that, I mean, to be honest with you, is that you know, we said, well, we have trees and we have this and we have that, and all that kind of stuff. And then one day, you know, when Jill and Evie and I were there, I mean, because we need to remember where, where we started with that. I'm sorry, I'm really stopped up my nose. Is okay. stopped up. But anyway, and, and, and Jill's daughter was like only three years old. She's probably 40 now. And she said, well, let's stay up all night. And we went, stay up all night. You're only three years old. But we started this campsite, and behind us, behind us was Mocha Verde, and behind us was uh, a, a Sandy Stevens campsite. And so when we started this campsite, hey, girls, it was just three of us. There were no boys. And we started this, and it was so great because people started coming and I remember a night when there was a really, uh, there was a guy that was really in bad shape mentally. It wasn't just <coughs> sorry, drugs. Was it a bad night for me? Not for you. <laughs> <laughs> for this guy. And so we said to him, would you like to look at the stars? And Camp Com's always been a person, a place where people came when they really had a problem. And so this guy was sitting there and I said, let me tell you about the stars, being a psychologist. And he was in such bad shape. And he said there, okay, I'm going to be okay now. I love Camp Com because I believe Camp Com, in, I was talking about Camp Com in Kerrville, was always a place where people could come. You know, like when, when Arthur Wood came and and he didn't have any place to come, and he came to us. There's so much I could tell you, but I know this isn't my time. But I think it's a place where people who really want to be helped come, where people love each other come. So thank you, Tim and Shannon, for doing this today, because I think this is a really beautiful thing. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. It's our pleasure, Lindell. Susan, you ready to roll? Yeah, let's roll. <laughs> roll, girl. You look great, Susan. Thank you. you. Look gorgeous, Susan. I've, I'm unmuted, aren't I? Yes. yes. Okay, I don't know how many of you know the story behind Enchanted Forest, but Bill and I were out at Camp Calm here. Oh. We asked people to write down their thoughts about Camp Calm. And it was little tiny pieces of paper that we brought back to my house. We scattered them all over my, in the, on the floor of my TV room. And based on what people said about Camp Calm, that's what we, that's how the song evolved. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And by the way, I wasn't gonna sing because my voice is kind of, well, my voice is always gradually. But after listening to Jake, I couldn't be more gravelly than him. <laughs> you come to the 
this land to part. Oh, by the way, everybody, keep yourself mute, but sing the chorus with me if you know. Gotcha. This land to partake of each other. Eat of my bread and I'll drink of your wine. A small slice of life that two of you are sharing. Come early, leave late, we don't keep track of time. These hills are so filled with the spirit of music that even the pine trees can carry a tune. The campfire smoke rises up with our voices below time overhead and caresses the moon. It's not what you sing, but the way that you sing it. So lift up your voices and join in the song. The joy in the love that we share here together and hold dear the memories of those who are gone. We hear you, Masala. We see you, San Francis. In this green sanctuary, together we stand. A circle of friends that have now become family, with heart holding heart and hand holding hand. It's not what you sing, but the way that you sing it. So lift up your voices and join in the song. Rejoice in the love that we share here together and hold dear the memories of those who are gone. It's not what you sing, but the way that you sing it. So lift up your voices and join in the song. Joys and the love that we share here together and hold dear the memories of those who are gone. An enchanted forest where love lingers on. Thank you, Susan. Beautiful, Susan. Awesome, Susan. Great to hear you. I'm I'm glad you did that because it you know that was needed here at this mm -hmm. at this gathering <laughs> and at every damn gathering for that matter. It's a camp calm song. You bet. Speaking of which, before Clara sings, um, what and here first... comes Clara. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the first party at the land called? Oh. I'm not blue to collar say. hippies. There you go. Yay! <laughs> Power Brothers picnic, the blue collar hippies. Then calm. I was there. Some early oh. ones. <laughs> you remember it very good. Guess I wasn't drunk enough. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so good to see you, Clara. I get to see your pictures on Facebook all the time. And uh, that's well, that's because I am uh, fairly shameless about posting, you know, food and cats and such. Just the shameless <laughs> people. We appreciate Love it. Love you, Clara. I loved your I loved your COVID outfits. Oh, thank you, thank you. Those those, those oh, made my closet was awesome. Thanks. Yeah. It was it was a really fun time. By by the end, I was a running out of uh, interesting clothes to wear, and b getting cold, <clears throat> and I just couldn't bring myself to keep like wearing tights. Um, so, but I very much appreciate you know like the the dose of validation was was very good. So thanks everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Clara, love you, Clara. Good to see you, Clara. After a while, I began to think that your closet must be like that tent in in. Uh um harry potter you know it was much bigger on the inside than it was on the outside yes yes well the real secret is that i've taken over the majority of the closets in this household so i'm i'm really trying to knock it down a notch um 
Instead, what happened is we moved the Christmas tree uh, into outside storage so that the closet was free for uh, other amusing things. So, you know, it's a process. I love you, Clara. Love you too. Yes. Thanks so much for <laughs> be, being a part of it. So good to see everybody. Yeah. We all love you, Clara. Oh, well, I love you all too. <laughs> Enough to, you know, continue the level of embarrassing myself. Um, I, I wrote a song uh, like a year ago, but then I didn't see anybody. So um, based on based on true events. Let's see. We were strolling <laughs> we were strolling in the sunshine of a summer afternoon hearing birds and sniffing flowers when we found the dead raccoon mm. matted fur and bloated belly stiff paws clawing at the skies with a horror movie grimace in his frozen milky eyes I said I'd like to take some photos. Do you think that's too bizarre? You said I'm glad you brought your camera cause I left mine in the car. <laughs> Make sure to show the soft part where it's rotted underneath. Mm. And the way the light is glinting off his bared and jagged teeth. How do I know you're the one who shares my heart? How do I know you're the perfect counterpart? There's a way, way you make me happy just by walking in the room. There's a love that's even wider than the grin of a dead raccoon. We were sipping Cabernet and snacking on imported cheese beneath an arbor in a vineyard, cello music on the breeze. When the sound of springtime sprang up from a fountain to the west, a dozen eager toads declaring whose sperm was the best. We both stood in an instant Leave the glasses, leave the plates. The wine is less entrancing than these toads attracting mates. In my stockings and your necktie, we were crouching in the grass, looking on in wide-eyed wonder at screaming toads in search of ass. How do I know you're the one who shares my heart? How do I know? You're the perfect counterpart. There's the way you walk beside me as we travel any road. There's the love that's even louder than the call of a horny toad. How do I know you're the one who shares my heart? How do I know you're the perfect counterpart? There's the way you understand the parts in life that matter most. Some of them are beautiful and some of them are gross. <laughs> really <Brilliant>. love it. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. They're kissing I again. Well, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful and touching. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. That was great. Um, so Shannon, just, uh, I, I know we have a, a, a couple of, of, of more videos, you know, one with Tim and, and one with, uh, you know, the Tennessee stud where y'all go, where are we going to show that both of those during this process as well? Just making sure. It, it's up to you. I, I would really like to share Tim Henderson's. I, 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 I agree. So, are, are you are you ready for that? I am yeah. ready for that. I was like made ready. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go, okay? Okay. okay. 
María Consuela Arroyo Was born and was raised on the south side of town With eyes holding midnight and the face of an angel come down In softness and beauty she grew like a rose without thorns At fifteen she married, at sixteen her first child was born And time is a lover A blander in ripeness who harvests your dreams Time is the river that sweeps us along in its streams Brings us together and forces us cruelly apart And there's no wrinkled crone in her dry skin and bones Who is not a young girl in her Maria Consuela Arroyo She bore seven more on the south side of town And her love for her family like soft rain came whispering down Like flowers in a garden they flourished in beauty and grace With their eyes like dark mirrors reflecting the love in her face And time is the traitor Yes, time is the villain who stalks on our stage The bringer of heartache and the bringer of wrinkles and age He brings us together and forces us cruelly apart And there's no wrinkled crone in her dry skin and bones Who is not a young girl in Consuela Arroyo Her man fell in battle Across the dark sea And her children were scattered Like feathers that ride down the breeze And she kneels in the dark Nine candles she lights every day And Padre Alfonso remembers their names when he prays And times the black angel A dark curandero who brings the long sleep Time is the shepherd and he's keeping good watch on his sheep So he brings back together the souls that he once tore apart And he comforts old crows in their dry skin and bones For he still loves the girl in their heart is a lover The planter in ripeness Who harvests
Ooh, lovely, thank lovely, you, thank lovely. You, thank you. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh. Wow. And all those photographs just, I... just went by way too fast. You know? <laughs> it doesn't watch <laughs> Tim Heather, said. <laughs> going to have to watch it again and I... again. It just happened one afternoon when I was Marion and I were talking. And then I realized I had all these photographs of Tim from working on the six volume legacy collection. So it all happened in an afternoon in the middle of the pandemic, but it made Marion and I very happy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's it made a lot of wonderful, us happy. Wonderful job, Shannon. So um, thank, thank you, Shannon. That, it's yeah, so thank wonderful. You, Shannon. And, you know, Kerrville and Camp Calm were such a uh, wonderful part of Tim's life. So, you know, it, it met the, the friends that he had there meant the world to him. So, uh, so anyway, this is a great, great gathering. Good to see everybody. Landell, I'm so glad that you're continuing on with your life at age 78. That's fantastic. I love you. I love you. I love you, baby girl. <laughs> you all take care. I love you, baby. Oh, where we met Tim. Take care, Mary. I was going to do that song for my uh, when when it was my turn coming around. I was going to do that initially, and I am so glad that I didn't <laughs> because, <laughs> because there's, no way I could, there's no way I could have done for it what Tim did. So it was great to hear him again. I'm Amen. hoping that Amen. I'm hoping that perhaps we can. Uh, do one of these gatherings uh, based on Tim and really, uh, By really the way, dig Marian, in. Can I say something to Marion? Yes. Well, I have to tell you that the song Tim did for you, which told you he loved you, <laughs> my, my, in my eyes, in my eyes is my, and this was a, Sorry, I'm just okay. It was the thing that Jason and I chose as our song, and Jason is my person in my life now. So that was, I'm sorry, that was our song. Okay, thank you. In my eyes, which is so beautiful. Yes, yes, it is. It's okay. one of my favorite songs, it but is. we chose it as our song. Okay, thank you. And, oh, I, thank you so much. And I have to mention at the end of the video, that fantastic video, there's a plaque on the seat there at Kerrville that says something about Tim, a part of, of Kerrville course. always. And um, Daniel and Ellen Bowling put that there. So thank you to Daniel and Ellen. And I'm glad you got that in the video, Shannon. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, and Daniel and Ellen need to thank Camp Calm because that's where we first met Tim Henderson. That's right. And I also have to say one of my very proudest achievements ever was bringing Shannon and Marion together to work on yeah. that legacy collection. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. Yes, she was, I think I was doing stuff on the history project. And, mm -hmm. um, she's like, but, but, but you have to get a hold of Marianne Henderson. You just have to get a hold of, to answer all those questions you can't answer. Yeah, and we got together in Santa Fe with the bowlings and you, and it sort of happened, and the legacy collection was the result. So that's wonderful. Thank yes, you. I, I camped in my camper in your driveway for two years. And we bought the first copy. Yeah. Who? We bought the first copy. Yay. <laughs> They, yeah, by the way, there's more on the uh, Amazon. <laughs> more copies. <laughs> All right, you go, Marion. <laughs> All right. So anyway, keep going. You gonna, oh, I thought you were gonna finish them up. I thought you were gonna finish them up. Yeah. Never mind. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, so on my, on my list here, I have Liz, Ruth, and I believe Tom Bianchi has joined us. Yay, Tom. Yay, Liz. Yay, so, Liz, Liz, are you ready? And, and if, if it takes you just a little bit to get ready. Yeah, uh, I'm ready. I, of... I, I had to get my shit together after that video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little verklempt there, you know. I'll never stop missing Tim. No. Okay, but um. 
But I guess I'll uh, do a COVID song that I wrote. Let's come together so we can stay apart in this together everybody plays a part i'm tired of being in my house i know that you are tired too not having enough fun but that's the thing that we must do you go your way i go mine we shall not meet i miss you terribly but that's the way that it must be Only love will get us through. Let's come together so we can stay apart in this together. Everybody plays a part. People marching for themselves. What about the common good? They raise their fists up in the air. Forget about the neighborhood. We are one universe. What you do affects the rest of us. I don't know what I should do. I throw my arms up in disgust. Ooh. Only love will get us through. Let's come together. Let's come together. Please come together so we don't have to stay apart. I'm <laughs> glad. Love you, Liz. Thanks, Liz. Thanks. <laughs> so, Ruth, before you get going, I got a couple more questions. Y'all ready? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. How many of you remember Ed Florida? Um, I remember his name. I, I met him when, when he I and did. Carol were still together as, as a beautiful... Um, we, we have somebody here that knows some Ed Florida songs. All Brooks. right. Mr. Brooks. Outstanding. I, I'll bet he does. He knows everybody. He does. Songs. does for a fact. So what side of the when, Rio Grande did Ed prefer and why? <laughs> Not this one. <laughs> preferred the southern side. And why? Say again. Why why did he prefer the south side of of the Rio Grande River? And he would he would tell you Make, this right off right yeah. off the bat. It didn't have to deal with the bureaucrats from the US government. That that that, that now I'm sure of that, but that that would not be the first thing he <laughs> Here's because, there is a wind, because there is a wind that would would say, East Texas. He is in beans. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm just going to roll this one out here. He preferred the Mexican side because he preferred the Mexican women. So there you go. 
Yeah, it was it was probably the only one that was a wetback going the other way. Exactly. <laughs> that they took way better care of him than uh, women. In by the, the way, by the way, as a conservative, wetback is not a political. Political. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and when have I been? And when have I been known to be correct? That is not correct. And when have I known to be correct? No, but yeah. I'm a conservative, so I'm telling you, it's not a political correct thing. Okay, well, Ed was not politically correct either. That's what, that's what he called himself. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gringo Mojito. That's what he called himself. <laughs> okay. Yeah. As as a frostback. Um, I, I, someone who, who uh, escaped the, the border north of us. Um, oh, the north of us, so precious, baby. <laughs> um, uh, I, I just want to say that there, there is a the wind that blows through East Texas and West Texas, and through. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, 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 I'm too drunk to speak. Sorry. Okay. 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 Chris, 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 Chris. And that's not new news. Chris, I lived in Montana, which was only, uh, what, 70 miles from Canada. I lived in, 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 uh, when I lived in Montana, it was only 70 miles from from Canada, and I went. Oh God, that's where my dad came from. <laughs> I, I I hear yeah. you. I was, I, I was a frost back in Victoria. And, oh, um, yeah, anyway. there you go. <laughs> well, at, at Florida is the reason that I got to Kerrville. No kidding. Wow. Florida. Florida. The, yes, I had um, I had booked Ed to um play at uh, the old Vienna open mic. And then he called and canceled the gig because he had gotten accepted into New Folk. And then he went on to explain to me what New Folk and the Kerrville Folk Festival were. This was back in 1988. And so he canceled the gig and then asked if I wanted to show up, which sounded like a great idea. Um, it was pretty easy for me to replace uh, replace him in the lineup, and I flew to San Antonio and met him at the San Antonio airport, and we drove directly to the Quiet Valley Ranch, found a big old log, and stuck it in uh, right up against those blue collar hippies, and the rest is, uh, as they say, history. <laughs> you go, Tom. Actually, I don't think blue collar hippies were were there. <laughs> yeah, well, somebody resembling them was. I think Jerry Yearwood told me that's who they were when it started. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, hey, that a Cox. <laughs> is that a politically correct um, um, I probably moniker? Go away, so I don't. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> love you, honey. Take it away, Miss Ruth. Okay. Jersey girl. Thank you. Jersey girl. Jersey represent. <laughs> <And they. laughs> when I was a girl in Sunday school, the sages spoke to me. You can read the book, that holy book. But be careful what you perceive. Now you can search the scriptures for hidden truths and discover your history. But don't go seeking out enlightenment if you don't know allegory, if you don't know how to swim. For her temples are like a pomegranate split open behind her veil. Her eyes are the pools of Heshbon, her nose the Tower of Lebanon, her lips are like a scarlet ribbon. She's God's people, Yisrael. Rakatakatutu, Nidodi, Rakatakatapadodi, Lee. 
My beloved is to me a gazelle, leaping across the mountains. Catch the foxes, the little foxes. I will be your garden fountain. A lily among the brambles is he, the apple within the trees. My beloved is mine and I am his. Our bed is made of leaves like a forest canopy. So into the city I did go, down to the squares of the street. Found the watchmen on their rounds who left me bruised and beat. I looked for him, I called for him, then I looked some more. Have you seen the one who my heart loves? Hark! I hear a knocking at the door. He's knocking at my door. For his legs are pillars of marble, his golden arms are rods. His body is like polished ivory, decorated with lapis lazuli. His raven black hair is waxy. He's a loving and caring god. Rock-a-tock-a-doo-doo, and e do dee rock a tock a tock top a do dee lee At last I found my love and clung to him within my mother's house. We drink spiced wine, taste milk and honey, and the kisses of her, his mouth. We do not arouse or wake in love until it so desires, for love which is as strong as death burns like a blazing fire, a mighty blazing fire. Now my love, he rests between my breasts, his right arm and embrace. His left arm is behind my head, his fruit sweet to my taste. Pomegranates are in blue, blossoms are wide open. How delightful is your love, my bride. The relationship between God and man? Believe it if you can. My, be my beloved showed up at my door, disrobed with two drenched hair. From within my heart did stir, he thrust his hand through the corridor. Fingers dripping with flowing myrrh, my vineyard is mine to share. rock a tack a doo doo a knee do dee rock a ta sha she 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 <laughs> Love it. <laughs> it's okay. well, Ruth, I've, I've 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 never seen you so just wrapped up with a song like that before. I just I just I love it. That is the first song I ever wrote. I uh, the number of songs I've written don't get through a full handful, but that's the first song I ever wrote. <laughs> well, I, I want to hear that again. <laughs> So I, I think we've got Tom, Tom went to feed his turtle, antibiotics. No, uh, yes. Yeah. Treat, treat treat his turtle. Um, how many of you have seen the the, the Tennessee stud, the, the actual Camp Com video? It's and, and a uh -oh. lot of you have it. Yes, I do. All Is right. It? So and then after this, are are we going to um? say goodbye to our friends on Facebook and go into our after party, or do we have more um, more things coming up? Probably be about to do the after party because then we can say all the things we haven't been saying. That, that works for me. So, so, so this is, this is going to be our, uh, our closer. I think we need to give a, a big round of applause to Ken Gaines for Yay, making this yay. go so seamless Woo. and smoothly and making us look so professional here. Thank you, Ken Gaines. Way to go, Ken. Absolutely. Yay. Thanks, yeah. for put, thanks for putting up with me. I, uh, you know. <laughs> here, easy to put up with, Ken. Uh, I agree. And, and brain porpoises can run a calm Zoom meeting. We know you're in the city, and you're also a camp calmer. And, and there will be plenty of time for more little song circle sharing and stories in our after party. Um, so why don't we kick up Tennessee Stud and we can let these folks in uh, Facebook land either um, find their way to join us in Zoom or we can cut them loose and let them go back to cat videos. Well said, Tim. So I, I put this video together because um, I heard that Dan Mary had lost his voice. And to me, uh, the festival in Kerrville didn't start 
or end until he played me this song. Along about 1825, I left Tennessee very much alive. I never would have made it through Arkansas mud if I hadn't been riding on the Tennessee sky. See, I had a little trouble with my sweetheart's pa. One of her brothers was a bad outlaw. So I sent her a letter by my Uncle Fudd, and I rode off on the Tennessee sky. Oh, the Tennessee stud was long and lean, the color of the sun, and his eyes were green. And he had the nerve, and he had the blood, and there never was a horse like the Tennessee stud. I was riding my horse through a beautiful land, I run smack dab into an Indian band. Well, they jumped their nags with a whoop and a yell, and away we went like a bat out of hell. Well, there came for a time or two Show them what the Tennessee hoss could do Well, them redskin boys couldn't get my blood Cause I was riding on the Tennessee studs We drifted on down across no man's land Across that river called the Rio Grande I raced my hoss with a Spaniard's bowl Till I got me a skin full of silver and gold Honey and that gambler, we couldn't agree. We got in a fight over Tennessee. We jerked our guns, he fell with a thud. And I got away on the Tennessee stud. The Tennessee stud was long and lean, the color of the sun, and his eyes were green. And he had the nerve, he had the blood, and there never was a hoss like the Tennessee stud. I got just as lonesome as a man could be A dreamin' of a gal in Tennessee Tennessee studs, green eyes turned blue Cause he was a dreamin' of a sweetheart too We loped her right back across to Arkansas I whooped her brother and I whooped her paw When I seen that gal with the golden hair She was riding on the Tennessee Stirrup to stirrup, side by side, across the mountains and the valleys wide. Made the big muddy and reported the blood on the Tennessee mare and the Tennessee stud. There's a curly haired baby on the cabin floor. A little horse coat playing round the door. I love that gal with the golden hair and the Tennessee stud loves the Tennessee mare. Tennessee stud was long and lean, the color of the sun, and his eyes were green. And he had the nerve, he had the blood, and there never was a hoss like the Tennessee stud. <laughs>